Hey folks, today we are taking a look at Transformers Fall of Cybertron Autobot Blaster. Now you may notice that Autobot Blaster is just, well, Decepticon Soundwave with a new head and a new tape dude. So the box is the typical uh, Fall of Cybertron boxes. I really actually do like the fact that there is a chunk taken out of the side or a wedge that does... I think cut down on the cost of the box. However, I would rather it be maybe on the top, but eh, no, oh well. Here on the side, you've got the different uh, tapes. Tapes I use in quotes. Back of the box, nice tech specs. Overall look at the figure. Side of the box isn't anything. Bottom of the box, you just see the other two sets you could buy. So let's open them up. Blaster is packaged in robot mode and looks very nice. I have to say that the red, reddish orange, yellow, and the tan legs really work well for this mold. And I think the actual figure overall looks better than Soundwave. Now, I'm not saying Soundwave looks bad at all, but I think the brighter color works better for this mold. Plus, you don't have those weird teeth go happening uh, down here on the chest. Though you do have here on the chest what appears to be like stop start and play buttons but they're not labeled as such it is a very nice look that you can see into the chest in this little plastic window and it looks like there's supposed to be some kind of tape deck inside he has the same gimmick that soundwave has of the let's launch the things out of my chest and that sort of works not really well but it does sort of work now, as you can see, I do have the blaster attached to his shoulder, so he does have the same hole that Soundwave has, but the blaster really is meant to be held in the hand. Unfortunately, his hands don't really have much in the way of strength in the wrists because, the trans because of the transformation, they're supposed to slide into the forearms, but you really have to hold the hands in order to push the gun into place. Unfortunately, as you can see, it looks like I got this fist stuck. Blaster's head mold is spot on, and it does have light piping. As you can see, there is some blue light piping at the top of back of his head. Like I said, the face is spot on, and it looks actually more like the comic book version of Blaster than the G1 show. Just a really good head mold. Blaster's data disc partner is Steeljaw, so we will activate Steeljaw's gimmick. And as you saw, he drops, pops in, but he doesn't do a full transformation like Laserbeak does. He does kind of a half transformation. So there's actually more transforming needed to be done. Folding out the tail, folding down, folding out, and flipping out the rear legs, and then just kind of folding the front legs into place. You end up with this little lion-esque thing, but... I really don't think the steel jaw mold works for this data disc idea. It just does not work that well. Uh, Laserbeak is a much better implementation than this, and probably Ratbat and the and Rumble Frenzy Eject and Rewind are probably better as well. I, I just I don't care for this little steel jaw figure. So here we have Blaster standing next to Soundwave, and as you can see, there aren't that many differences in the molds. Other than, let's say, just the chests and the head, there's really no difference. Uh, even the, uh, oh no, the wheels are in fact different. I don't know how we could see that, but the wheel textures are, are slightly different. Uh, other than that, though, they're the same figure, and I'm not complaining by any means. Uh, they're both really good figures with lots of posability. Speaking of posability, rat, or Ratchet, yeah, Blaster's head is on a swivel, shoulders are on a swivel and on hinge. There's a swivel just underneath the, or just above the elbow. Elbows are on a ratchet, wrists have up and down, and swivel movement. No torso articulation. Hips are on a double swivel, then there's a swivel, or double hinge and swivel, then there's a swivel above the knee, ratchet in the knee, and then a hinge at the foot. So overall, lots of posability, but I just pretty much like him looking like this. I think he looks just really, really dynamic in this pose. Transformation is exactly the same as Soundwave. We'll start with the fists, and I like to just turn the fists uh, so that they, the fist part is pointing down, and just fold them up. Eh, sometimes that doesn't work. Eh, just get them folded in and they'll be good. 
Then take the arms and move them out so you can flip the wheels around. Reach around to the back and pull the back unit all the way out. Then down here, push this little piece of plastic up all the way. Flip the flip this cover bit around and then fold it up so that it is hanging above the robot head. Then you can take the arms, point them straight back, open up these panels, and fold the arms up along the head, and then put them together. And I did that wrong. I actually want to fold them down by the hinges at the shoulders, and then collapse them into the body. That is the proper way to do it. Like that. And the arms will just fold up underneath, behind the wheels. Take the legs, swing them all the way forward, fold up the feet all the way, grab the hip and detach it from the rest of the body, and then snap it into place behind the back. Then take these wheel sections and rotate them all the way around so that the inside part of the, or I'm sorry, so that the wheel is actually facing the rest of the body, and then fold the wheels up and peg them into place. And then take the cover piece we talked about earlier and just fold it down and reach in the front and kind of flip up the front of the vehicle up just a little bit. It doesn't really peg into place anywhere, but just flip it up so that it's not in the way and it's not flat faced. And there we go. The vehicle mode is okay. It's not perfect. I do like the detailing, the silver detailing of the wheels made to look like speakers and then the little stylized Autobot symbols in there. The thing that bugs me about the mode is it doesn't make me think of Blaster. I don't know why, but this vehicle mode just does not make me think of Blaster in any way. The front of the vehicle is probably the weakest point because you've got all this exposed area that is done and handled a little bit better on the sound wave. Oh, figure, excuse me. To activate his gimmick in this mode, you have to push this section down and then, full, and then push the little button inside to expose the tape section. And then you can launch the data disks out from inside the vehicle mode. It doesn't really work all that well. It just doesn't. Now, compared to Soundwave, I think Blaster is fine. But I think Soundwave's vehicle mode just looks a little more dangerous, and that's just due to the purple and these John Deere Threshers up front. As you can see, the fronts of the vehicle mode are just a little bit different. Like I said, the just the overall front is different. Obviously, the gun is different. And though the, though the other styling is exactly the same, except for the wheels. As you can see, the wheels on Blaster are more human speakers, and the wheels on Soundwave are more Fall of Cybertron, War of Cybertron speakers. But overall, the vehicle mode isn't bad at all. As I said, this alt mode does not scream blaster to me, but that's just a personal thing. There's nothing wrong with this figure at all. The one thing I do like is I kind of like blaster's paint job more than Soundwave's. I like Soundwave, don't get me wrong, but the brighter colors just work better for me. Maybe it's the fact that it's currently raining outside and it was supposed to snow today, but I just like the brighter colors a little bit more. Overall, Blaster is a good figure. It's a fun figure. It feels solid. It doesn't feel like it's going to break at any point, and it just feels like it's a well-assembled figure, which is nice compared to some of the other figures Hasbro has released lately that just don't feel quite right. Overall, though, if you missed out on the Soundwave figure or the Sound Blaster figure, Blaster is definitely worth picking up. I got him at my local Toys R Us, and there was one of him in five Grimlocks, so... <laughs> They're out there, and if they've hit my area, then they're probably then they've probably hit all the other areas in the U.S. as well, because I swear my area is the last to get anything. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz, and I will catch you next time.